Hi everyone, Aiden here at the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Swagman e-spec hitch mounted bike rack and seeing how it fits on our 2022 Forest River Salem FSX travel trailer. Now it's important to note that with this bike rack it is a hitch mounted bike rack and our camper didn't come with a hitch right from the factory so you will need to find an option to mount that up. We're using the e-trailer bumper mounted hitch that's going to be able to support the weight of this carrier and the rack is rated for travel trailer use. So it's just some things to keep in mind when you're finding the right bike rack for you and your travel trailer. The other thing to take note of here is your spare tire. If you don't wanna remove the spare tire, just know that it is going to probably cause some clearance issues, especially depending on your bike. Our mountain bike here today, the forks of it actually do touch the tire and it is kind of bringing this off center a little bit, but overall the bike is in there very solid and it does work. And because it's just a tire, I'm not too worried about any sort of damage happening to the bike, but depending on the bike you're carrying, that might not be something you're super comfortable with. So do keep it in mind. And if it is a concern for you, maybe removing the spare tire and transporting it inside the trailer is your best option. With all that in mind though, let's take a closer look at the rack itself. The bike is gonna be held in by three points of contact. At the very bottom, we've got these wheel straps that hold the wheels down in these wheel cradles. Using the hand knobs at the bottom, we can loosen those cradles up and slide them back and forth to accommodate for different wheel bases. Moving up the rack though, we've got the center mast that's going to have two frame hooks on it. That frame hook is going to come down on top of the frame and use it to hold it down in the cradles. That's going to, like I said, give it a really solid hold on the bike, but there are some things we need to keep in mind with the frame hook. That's making frame contact, so carbon frame bikes are not gonna be a good option here because that can damage the frame. With alternative frame bikes, you're probably gonna need to pick up a bike adapter bar because with those slanted frames, a hook like this can't get a good grip and there's not a flat section to grab onto and keep it stable. And then with the weight capacity here, that's gonna be a lot less limiting because this is rated for 70 pounds per bike. So if you do have some e-bikes, this can be a really good option for you, especially with your travel trailer because there's not very many travel trailer rated bike racks and even fewer of those that are rated for e-bikes. The frame hooks will ratchet down over top of the center mast and that's how they hold the bike down and don't come back up. To release them, press the button and push up to release that ratcheting mechanism. And you'll notice that the button there does have a lock. So if that's locked, you won't be able to push the button. Therefore, you won't be able to remove that frame hook, keeping your bike secured to the rack. This bike rack is mostly fixed. It doesn't have any tilting features. Not that we would really need it in this application. For most cases, that's just to get better access to the trunk of a vehicle, having the bike rack tilt away or in the case of a trailer or something like this, it gives you better access to a ladder. But in your case with the Salem FSX, we don't have a ladder, we don't have compartments back here, so it's really not a concern. So all we have to do now is get the bike unloaded. That's gonna be pretty straightforward to do. The wheel straps at the bottom will be the first point that we remove. These are gonna be held in place with this button, so press that in to release the ratcheting wheel strap on both sides. And then we can move up to the wheel or the frame hooks last because this is the thing that actually holds the bike upright. We want to do that while we can have a hand on the bike to steady it. One thing I noticed with this is that it is pretty tight just because your bike is getting a little bit of pressure from that spare tire like I mentioned before. So it's pushing the frame against the hook. So even though the button is fully pressed, it does feel like it's still under tension and not moving. So you have to give it a little more force. Again, I would maybe just remove the spare tire. At this point, you can lift the bike up and over the center mast, or if you've got a hand free, pull the lever at the bottom, fold the mast down, out of the way, and then you don't have to lift the bike near as high to get it away from the rack. At this point, I always like to replace the strap so they're not freely moving around and add the hooks back onto the center mast. That can just be done right here while it's down. Just make sure you've got it in the proper orientation. And they don't need to go down all the way just so they're out of your way. And at this point, I wanna take the time to get some measurements. We're gonna start off with our ground clearance. I'm gonna to go to the lowest point at the back end of the bike rack, which is right here. 
and that's gonna be exactly 25 inches of ground clearance. Now it is important to note that that is with the hitch we're using. Depending on the bumper mounted hitch you go with, you might find that it sits a little bit differently on your bumper and changes some of these measurements. So just take that with a grain of salt and make sure that you do check the hitch you have. And for the most part, it should be very similar. The distance that we add to the back of our trailer, I'll be going from the bumper, not the spare tire. That's going to be sticking out 27 inches to this point right about here. And that's gonna be the hook that sticks out the furthest. So it does add a little bit of length to your trailer. It's not a super long trailer, so you're not adding too much length, but it's something to be mindful of when we're driving down the highway and passing other vehicles that you might wanna give yourself a little more room whenever you're changing lanes. The rack could be folded up to save some space when it's not in use though, by removing this pin and retaining clip, but I'm not gonna fully remove it right now because it actually does make contact with the spare tire when it's in the folded position. So you aren't able to actually fully fold it up. The cradle here is gonna hit. So again, just another case to maybe take the spare tire carrier off if that's a concern for you. But if it's not in use, I'd maybe just consider removing it from the hitch entirely. It is designed to work with a two inch by two inch receiver tube. So when picking up a bumper mounted hitch, make sure it fits that specification. And it comes with a locking anti-rattle bolt. The anti-rattle bolt there threads into the shank of the bike rack and locks on the other side using the same exact set of keys that we use for the handles and the hooks up top. So it's the same key system. The anti-rattle does a really good job at holding it nice and solid and taking any shake or play out of the hitch, making for an overall solid bike rack moving experience. And overall, that's really all there is to it for the Swagman e-spec. It's a pretty straightforward and simple bike rack. My one recommendation would maybe be to look into some other options. If you don't want to have a hitch added onto your bumper, they do make some bike racks that just attach directly to the bumper. With those options, you're going to have the same exact problems of clearance with your spare tire to think of. And with those, they're generally not as nicer. Hitch mounted racks that are first and foremost designed for passenger vehicles just generally feel a lot nicer, have better construction and better ease of use. So for me, I find that they work better. But for you, that might not be something that you need. Something like this might be way over the top for things like weight capacity. If you don't need the e-bike support, then don't worry about it. There are other options like the Yakima Long Haul that can go in a hitch and doesn't need to support that much weight. So look into those options and find the one that fits the best for you and your bikes. But as far as this one goes on our Forest River Salem, I think it's gonna be a pretty solid fit aside from the spare tire. Thanks for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.